start this process off, keeping track of dividends, divisors, quotients, and remainders. Okay, but let's just see what happens with 72. We know 72 divides into 14472. Okay, and we know that 14472 is equal to this whole number here. Okay, so that's brilliant. So we know 72 divides into this. This is equal to that, so 72 must divide into this whole number here, okay? But we know 72 divides into 2736, okay? So 72 divides into the whole number, it divides into this part, so it must divide into this remainder. And let's just double check that. So we have 792 divided by 72 gives us 11. Brilliant, okay? So now we know that 72 divides into this number and this number, okay? Now when we bring these down, we know that 72 divides into this from the last step, okay? 72 then, if it divides into this, it must divide into the whole thing. But we know it divides into this, so it must also divide into this. Let's check. So we have 360 divided by 72, okay? Uh, it goes in five times. So brilliant. So now we know 72 divides these two numbers, okay? Now, continuing again, well, we know 72 divides into 792. 792 is equal to this number here, this summation. Uh, but we know 72 divides into the 360, so if it divides into the 360 and if it divides into the summation, it must divide into the remainder. And clearly 72 divides into 72. Okay? So what we can actually see is from this process, okay, and continuing on, 72 divides into both of them with a remainder of 0. So the last non-zero remainder must have been the greatest common divisor okay, between the two numbers. Yeah. If I said we'll do this out in a little bit more rigor, okay, uh, and to generalize, okay, what we'd probably have is this. Okay, uh, so let's say so this is the logic, okay, the logic behind the Euclidean, the Euclidean algorithm, okay, the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, so what we'd probably have is something like this. Yeah, let's say, okay, so let's say. Let's say we are given two numbers. Let's say we're given two numbers, A and B, okay? okay. And let's say there's a restriction on this. Let's say for argument's sake that A is less than or equal to B, for argument's sake, okay? So let's say we're given two numbers A and B, okay? And their greatest common divisor, let's call that G, okay? So what we know is this, okay, is that because the GCD of A and B is equal to G, okay, we know that G must divide A and G must also divide B. And we know it's the greatest common divisor, okay, because we've chosen it to be the greatest common divisor. Okay. Now the division algorithm the division algorithm algorithm tells us tells us okay. Well it tells us that and we're assuming A to be less than or equal to B, it tells us that uh, there exists a number Q, okay, and a number and a number or such that such that I suppose uh, B can be written to be equal to A times Q plus R. In other words, given the larger number, the smaller number will divide into a Q times with some remainder. That's what the division algorithm tells us. Okay? Now, clearly, from our choice of G, okay, to be the greatest common divisor between A and B, okay, G divides B, okay, and also G divides G divides in this case here, G divides G divides A, okay? So we have G divides B, so from this slide here, G divides B, and B is equal to this, so therefore we have G divides AQ plus R, okay? That makes sense. Now, because G divides AQ plus R, okay, well then that means okay, there must be exist G goes in to it a certain amount of times, so therefore, okay, there exists some number C uh, such that such that G is c G as a product of C must be equal to AQ times R, so that GC must be equal to AQ 
plus R. Okay? Which means that GC minus AQ must be equal to R. Okay? But we know we know that G divides A. Okay? So let's just say that we know that G divides A. Which means there must be there must exist some other number D such that uh, G is a multiple times of A, yeah? Okay? Oh, sorry, A is a multiple times of G. In other words, we must have, uh, well, we must have uh, G times D must be equal to A, okay? Because G divides into A, well, it goes in D times, okay? So now we have this particular situation here. So now what we have is that GC minus GD times Q, substituting in for A, must be equal to R. Now, there's a common term here, it's G. So now we have G times C minus DQ, and these are all integers, okay, must be equal to R. Okay. Uh, C minus DQ is just an integer, okay, let's call it E, so what we have is G times E is equal to R. Okay. In other words, G divides into R a certain multiple of times, okay. So this is the main logic behind the Euclidean algorithm, yeah, okay? is that if we have got a greatest common divisor between A and B, okay, and we apply the division algorithm, that that greatest common divisor must divide into the remainder, okay? So now that we know that it divides into the remainder, okay, it must now divide into A and R. So if we apply the division algorithm again, this time on A and R, okay, okay we get a new remainder, well, the greatest common divisor divides into A, it divides into R, and must divide into the remainder. And this process goes on and on and on. It'll constantly keep going where these remainders are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and tending to zero. Okay? And as such, the last non-zero remainder will be this G value. It will be this greatest common divisor okay, that we've set out to look for. Okay? Uh, I know this wasn't a rigorous proof, yeah, of the logic behind the Euclidean algorithm, okay? We could probably go into a little bit more detail and actually specify things a little bit more, okay? But hopefully from a, a divisibility perspective, uh, what we can actually see is that this Euclidean algorithm does result in the greatest common divisor uh, between two numbers. Okay, guys, uh, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, I do accept that this particular generic approach here uh, can be a little bit complicated in relation to trying to keep track of the logical understanding, your logical understanding of each individual step. But hopefully this particular loose, I, predict, I suppose, overview of what's going on behind the scenes uh, helped us to understand uh, helped us understand this particular algorithm. Okay? Uh, and if you go back to, this, to the earlier, if you rewind to the earlier part of the video, uh, the example I think uh, clearly shows us yeah, that this last non-zero divisor, I suppose, is the GCD, is this greatest common divisor. Okay, once again, uh, guys, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, thank you for your time.